Shop Motors. My name is Clay. We're going to take a little bit of a, a look at a 64F100 and some motor issues. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button, give us a like, share these with your friends. We'd love to bring you along on the journey as we look at uh, some of these old parts and some of these old cars. So in a previous video, I shared with you that I was going to pull this motor out and I was going to put another motor in it. I did a little work uh, on it over uh, the holiday and determined it had a couple issues that I'm going to give a shot at fixing and addressing prior to doing a, a motor R&R. &R. Uh, mainly for the reason of if I pull the motor out and it's broken and I put it uh, under the bench then I still have to figure out what's wrong with it before I can use it in another project. So I'm really just adding work um, on top of, you know, um, having a motor that I can't really uh, use right away. So what I decided to do was dig a little deeper on it and see where the problems were. So the first thing I did was I addressed the carburetor issue. It had a Ford 4100 uh, carburetor on it, which is a little four barrel, a small CFM Ford four barrel that came on 60s vintage. Uh, 289s and 390s and the like. I like those little carburetors and I've had really good luck with them but I could not get this one uh, to run quite right. So I rebuilt it, played with it, messed with it. Uh, it's, it is a little harder to get really good high quality rebuild parts for them. So uh, anyway I ended up pulling it off because it would run rich and flood when it was turned off like a needle and seat was leaking and I put a holly on it. So I put a holly on it, got it running. It seemed to run better and more even. It still had a dead cylinder. And so the next thing I did was address the dead cylinder. Um, it had two cylinders that were missing. Pulled uh, the plug, did a compression check. One, one of the cylinders had good compression, but it, was, it looked like it was fuel fouled. So I blamed the carburetor on that. The second one didn't have any compression. This motor had an issue early on of pulling one of the rocker studs out of the heads. So when I pulled the valve cover on the right bank, the number one cylinder had the rocker stud pulled out and I'll show that to you um, as we pull it apart. So basically what that means is I'm going to take the motor, I'm going to pull the heads off and you're going to follow along. I did a little bit of pre-work on it and uh, saved us some time and I'll show you what, what was done. But we'll pull the heads off, we're going to take them to the machine shop, and we're going to have screw and studs put in them. I'll do another valve job on them. I'm afraid the valve guide tolerance was too tight, and that could have been one of the issues. So I didn't build this motor, and I didn't build the heads, but I'll ream the valve guides and do the heads uh, before we put them back together and see if we can make this thing run. So let's take a look at a couple of the pieces that I saw and found when I pulled the valve covers off. Okay, so I did a little bit of pre-work to save some time and you can watch along as we tear some of the rest of it apart. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna pull the intake manifold and the cylinder heads. So I pulled, I pulled it up on the top dead center. I pulled the distributor out. I pulled the plug wires off and the electrical. I pulled the FIOD cable off. Uh, it had a uh, base bracket that mounted to the bottom of the spacer bracket and the reason it uses the spacer bracket is it had to elevate the carburetor a little bit to get all the linkage to work. And I pulled the valve covers and the headers loose and bolted those because we'll eventually need to get those off. But I'll show you the culprit of what kind of led us to this. And right here First, there was a bent push rod. The bent push rod. This is what came out of the cylinder head. It hadn't fall, fallen down inside the motor. You can tell um, it had been whacked on uh, quite a number of times to bend it like that. And the rocker arm was loose. So the bent push rod all by itself would be an easy fix. The problem is, is that if you look at across the studs, all those are the same height. 
if you go across this one it's way off so it's pulled that stud out of the head probably I don't know a quarter of an inch or so it pulled it out of the head it allowed that rocker arm to get some extra slot between the rocker and the push rod and the, all of that lash uh, let it get sideways and get cocked and then it bent it so it's conceivable that it could have done some damage to the valve but typically they don't because um, it isn't it isn't pushing trying to push the valve open at the wrong time it's just got a lot of lash and it bent the push rod so that's what it looked like that's the same thing that happened on the other side so if we pull this side off so if you look at this side you'll notice that it has stud 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 all the same kind of right where i'm putting that straight edge and then it has one that's completely different that's because this stud is a screw-in stud not unlike what you would find in a small block chevy that stud the head was was tapped and that stud was inserted into the head and you adjust that particular rocker just like you would a motor that did not have uh, a lock down um, for the rock arm. So these, you just bolt those down right to where they bottom out and that's the adjustment. With this particular one, you actually adjust it like you would early Fords and uh, Chevrolets. So, kind of see how that one's different right there. It's got a, a 3 8 instead of a 5 16 stud. It's got a different size nut on it. A little bit uh, beefier looking, different style. So now what we'll do is we'll make some quick work of pulling the intake off and uh, we'll zap the nuts off and the bolts off because it has studs and uh, pop it off and let you take a peek inside there. the manifold because it's an aluminum intake it will break if you're not careful you can bust the air right off of it so for those of you at home if that looked painful it was <laughs> okay Okay, so inside the motor looks nice and clean. Got just a little bit of um, coolant in there from pulling it apart, but not a big deal. Let's pull this other header off and we will show you what it looks like to pull the cylinder. So with these headers, it's got seven, it's got three eight bolts with a seven sixteenths head and they are, they're just kind of a pain to get off. I think anybody who has messed with headers will agree that they're just a pain. That's how it is. So what I do is I do the ones that are the hardest to get out usually have a tube right up against it like this one does and it's going to fight me I get them as much out of the way as I can um, before I take and crack the header completely loose because it doesn't get any easier 
later on to pull that tube to pull that um, bolt out when the header's hanging on it. So we'll do the same for this one. So what we have is we have one bolt at the very front of the header that's still on and still tight, so it's holding the header where, it, where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to pull the alternator bolt, the mounting bolt, out of the bracket because that bracket is going to come off with the cylinder head. It's this one right here. This bolt and spacer hold the alternator where it's supposed to on lots of Ford products. Tap that spacer out. We'll push that bolt in a little bit. Maybe not. Like I said, we'll leave that bolt where it's at and we'll pull some head bolts off. Okay, so you got some antifreeze leaking down there now. Everybody does this a little different. I don't take the rocker arms off because I let the valve springs and the tension on the valve springs pop the cylinder head off for me. So if you notice, when I hit the last one, the head made a noise and that cylinder head popped up. So the cylinder head is now pushed free from the head gasket, which can sometimes be a little bit of a fight. This one may not have been horrible just because it hasn't been that long since it's been apart. But the intake manifold popped me. So let's pull the cylinder head off. Okay. Let's pull the cylinder head off with the ground strip attached. Okay, so what you have now is you have a cylinder head off. We're going to take a look at the valves on the inside. We had some stuff attached to the back here, uh, ground strap. So sometimes there are things that are in your way when you're pulling it apart. It's a little bit messy. We'll pull this off and we'll get the cylinders dried out. And we'll take a look at this cylinder head uh, out of the engine compartment. So this is what the cylinder head looks like from the inside. So, number three also had a miss. I put a different spark plug in it, it cleaned up, it had good compression. You can tell by looking at the cylinder, it was firing. It has an, a gray charcoal-y look to it. That's typically what they look like when there's uh, been an explosion inside. If you look at this cylinder, you can tell it's wet, oily. Uh, it hasn't been firing. It didn't have any compression because it was never opening uh, the intake valve. So that one's, that's a telltale right there that something's happening with that cylinder. We know what's going on, but that's, that's the tell. What I'll do, what I'll do before I take these heads to the machine shop, I'll pull all the valves out. I'll pull all the springs and keepers off. I'll strip the head down to uh, just the bare casting and send it in and they'll put they'll put new studs in it, just like all of these will get pulled out and they'll put screw in studs. I'll check all of the uh, clearances for the valve guides and make sure none of them are too tight and see if there are any issues there, see if there's any reason that that valve would have been partic particularly hard to open. One of the reasons could be, again, I don't know who built these or what the story is around these heads, they could have um, high performance springs on them. So we can check to see if the springs are, have a lot of extra tension. Sometimes that will cause an issue as well. So this is what it looks like with the cylinder head out of the way. Again, you can kind of see how the very front piston, that's this one right here, is a little oilier. Uh, the rest of them, 
look a little more consistent. If you get really close, if you get really close, you can still see the cross hatches in the cylinder wall right here from the motor being freshly bored. So you might not be able to see it, but the motor is still quite quite new and fresh. So this has been part one. We'll probably call this a wrap on this video. Part one of pulling the little 302 apart. What we'll do now is I'll zap off the other head and strip them down and we'll send them to the machine shop. And then we will take you on the uh, kind of a peek over my shoulder as we rebuild that set of heads, put them back together and put the motor back together and do a first start on it. So keep your eye open for the follow-up video to this, part two. It won't be the next video that we put out. We have some other things that we're gonna show you, but it'll be in the next few weeks that we'll show you this motor going back together and getting started and all that. So thank you so much. This is Clay for Chop Shop Motors, and we'll see you on the next project.